A few months ago, I put together this just absolutely beautiful Kona gravel bike. I used an early 2000s Kona steel mountain bike frame. I converted it over to through axles and to disc brakes. I pulled that section out of the build video so that people who are not interested in watching that can still find this content. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do through axles and how to add disc brakes to your old steel mountain bike. This frame was initially designed to use quick release axles. So the diameter inside the dropouts is only 10 millimeters. I want to run 12 millimeter through axles on this frame. So I need to open those up to 12 millimeters so the axle will fit. I've got the frame mounted to my vise. I've got it clamped down and I've leveled the rear dropout so that it's parallel to the table in both directions. The last time I did this, I used a twist drill and it didn't work out that well. I've learned a bit from that. This time I'm going to use a boring head. So the minimum capacity of my boring head here is 10 and a half millimeters. That dropout axle hole is only 10. The first cut's gonna be a little bit heavy, but I've centered the tool on the axle. My plan is to bore it to 10 and a half millimeters and then slowly step it out, probably in quarter millimeter increments and bore that hole out to 12 millimeters. And that'll give me a 12 millimeter hole that's perfectly centered. And I'll make sure that I get it to the right size for the axle. Typically when I've done this kind of conversion, I've welded the nut to the frame, but I want to do it a little bit differently this time. I want that nut to be removable, kind of like it is on a modern frame. I made the axle nut from some 6061 aluminum. I turned it to shape in the lathe, tapped it, and then I cut its profile in the mill. I want to secure the nut to the frame with the original fender mount, so I drilled a 5mm hole so I could bolt it to the frame. Once installed, the axle fits through the frame and threads into the nut. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using flat mount calipers on this frame. On most of the bikes I own that have flat mount calipers, those calipers mount to the lower stay. Usually they're integrated into the dropouts. On this frame, however, there is just not enough space between the stays to fit the caliper. So I'm gonna install the caliper on the upper stay. To figure out where that goes, I clamped the caliper to the rotor and I rolled it around to see where it contacted the stay. My plan for modifying the stay for flat mount calipers is to make some steel spools that will bolt to the caliper. I'll then notch the stay so that those calipers will sit inside the stay and I'll weld them in place. So I'm gonna start by notching the frame. To do that, I'm gonna add some aluminum spacers to the underside of the caliper and I'm gonna mark its location on the stay. I'll then use my grinder to rough cut it out and then I'll use a file and my Dremel to fit it to final shape. Once I had the stay notched, I figured out the geometry for some spools. I made these out of some half inch steel rod that I had on hand. I cleaned them up in the lathe to give them a good surface for mounting the caliper. And then I drilled them out for a five millimeter bolt. Because the caliper is gonna mount directly to the frame without any sort of an adapter, I needed some adjustability. So I took the lower bracket, I put it in the mill and I slotted it out. Once the spools were done, I bolted them to the caliper to make sure they fit and I welded them in place. I'm gonna add a brace between the stays to improve the rigidity of the rear triangle with the rear brake. I used some half inch steel tubing that I had on hand. I shaped it to match the stays and mounted it at the same angle as the seat tube. I finished by grinding the welds with my Dremel so that it would match the style of the rest of the bike. I have my mind set on running a 1x GRX crank set on this frame. A big problem though is that when the crank arms are rotated around, they hit the chain stays. I decided to reshape the chain stays to add some clearance. I clamped the top and bottom of the stays to prevent them from distorting, and then I reshaped them. I added clearance with a peen and a punch. I should probably point out, when I reshaped the stays, I expanded the spacing between the rear dropouts to 142 millimeters to match the hub. I want the bike to look like it came with disc brakes, so I used a cutoff wheel and I removed the original cantilever bosses. Since I reshaped the stays, I needed to double check the alignment of the rear dropouts. I used a laser to do that. I set it up so it ran down the center line of the bike, and then I measured the distance from the beam to each dropout. You've seen me do this through axle and disc brake conversion before. I did it on the Gary Fisher build. On that bike, I welded a nut to the dropout. 
I like this approach a lot better. It turned out nicer and it took less time. So if you're gonna follow my lead, I recommend doing it the way we did it in today's video. This is only a small part of this bike's total build. So if you wanna see the full thing, click on this video. So that's it for today. Until next time, I'll see you later.